but said, remember Lot's wife. Jesus had talked to his disciples. If you look in John chapter six, uh, John chapter six Jesus sent the servant out. And when he told them what would happen in verse 66, John chapter five, verse 66, from this time, many of the disciples turned back and no longer followed him. Only 12 remains. And you know, he's, he sent servants. And he's asking the 12 who remained, verse 67. You, you do not want to leave to, do you? Because people had left Jesus, Jesus has gone. And he's asking, are you also going to leave me? And that prompted Jesus to tell his disciples that the channel you are embarking is a channel of faith and told them, remember Lord's wife. Because he knew that people would make choices that would make them get lost forever, like Lord did, Lord's wife did. We remember that the Lord came from Lord's wife. She came from a house. You know, they lived together with Abraham, a great man of faith. They had seen what God had done. But the choice they made to move to, to, to live in the city. When they reached there, there was the, we want to see the condition of the city. Because Jesus is taking them back and tell them, I'm the one who destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm the one who destroyed Lot because Lot is wife, because the choice he made. And Jesus is telling this message, remember Lot is wife. What was the condition of Sodom uh, on that city, Sodom and Gomorrah, where they went? If we look in the book of Genesis chapter 13 and verse 13, Jesus, the Bible is giving clear how that city looked, the condition of men there. Let us hear as uh, uh, we are going to read from that one chapter uh, of Genesis chapter 13, uh, verse 13. Genesis 13 verse 13 says, but the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. The men of Sodom and Gomorrah, when Lot went there, they were sinners and they were exceedingly sinful before the Lord. And their sin made Jesus to come down. If you go to Genesis chapter 18, verses 21, Jesus is coming down. The sin of, of Sodom and Gomorrah has made Jesus himself to come down and see and witness himself for sure that the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah had reached in heaven. So Jesus came down with two angels, the strong angels. He came down and first of all, he passed through Abraham and said, we are not going to hide our servant, Abraham, what we are going to do. And they went there. Just open your Bible, Genesis chapter 18, verses 21. And you will see Jesus himself said, I will go down and see the cry of the people of Sodom has reached me. Let us read there on verses uh, 21, where Jesus himself is coming down uh, to see. And that's why Jesus, because he knew what happened in 2000, he was there. He's the one who came and sent the angels to destroy the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. Jesus is the one who came, and that's why he's emphasizing this was, remember, Lot's wife. Let us read uh, that those verses, 21. Okay, Genesis 
18, verse 21. I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it, which is come unto me. And if not, I will now. I would know. Jesus said, I would go personally, me, by myself. I wanted to witness this cry of a sinful city, this cry of a lawlessness of the people in Sodom and Gomorrah. Jesus said, I myself would go there and see and see it by myself. And he told the angel, I want you to go there so that the angel would not say that, oh, they destroyed the people for nothing. Jesus himself came down. And the reason he came down, because there was a righteous man in that city that he went there to rescue. Jesus does not send anybody. He comes himself to save you. He came to save us. He came himself. He didn't send the angel. He came personally. And that's why he is so that he sent seven disciples to go and preach. But in the pipe of John chapter 6, 66, he said that the men of them abandoned him. And he was asking the one who meant, are you going to leave too? And he told them, remember Lord's wife. Because he knew that the, the decision they would make would affect them eventually in the wrong run as they serve him. In that, uh, uh, in that uh, where we were reading in John, uh, uh, you, you see that verse 22, Abraham is there. You know, Abraham is there. Abraham, when he, because the Lord had told them that I'm going to destroy uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham was there. Abraham was there also. And the, the, the Bible said that when the angels set their face, they went to, they turned to go, to, this, to go towards Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham remained with the Lord. That's what my Bible says. And, and, and I hope that's what you are reading on your, your Bible too. Verse 22. Let us read 22 and you see what happened. Of Genesis chapter 18, verse 22, where we were. Genesis 18, verse 22. Okay. As and the men turned their faces from their tents and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Abraham stood with the Lord. Jesus remained there with Abraham when the angels were went. And why did Abraham go there? If you read down there, Abraham is going to make intercession, asking, Lord, I know you are going to destroy these people. He started with a big number. He came down until 10. If, Lord, you get only 10 righteous people, will you destroy the city? Because he knew in Lot's house, they were 10. And he said, the Lord answered, I don't want to, to just say, let me read what the Lord said. First, that one, Abraham said, now that I've I've, 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 I've been so bold as to speak to the Lord. What if only 20 can be found there? And the Lord said, for the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then Abraham went down faster too, he says. Then he said, may the Lord not be angry with me. What if only 10 can be found there? And Jesus told him, for the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. When the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he left, and Abraham returned to his house. For the sake of the ten, I'm not going to destroy the city. Mostly, our our, our, our reading is based on chapter 19. That's the climax. 
The angels have gone now to Sodom. They are there. God had promised that the cry of Sodom has reached me. And when he reached there at the gate, he found Lot. Lot was, uh, was there. And Lot was there. And the Lord say he saw the men. And they told them, Lord was outside in the city. And they saw. He told them, friends, let us go to my house so that I can. The, the, the angels tried to persist. No, let us stay here in the city square. Uh, let us stay because they wanted to see how the people behave at night, how the, their things are, you know. And uh, uh, he, he persisted, please let us go and let's go so that uh, you can stay in our house for tonight. It's night. It's not good for you to stay here. Finally, the angels said, okay, we can go. And the men of those, of those uh, uh, city, they came. Verse 4 says, before they had gone to bed, all the men from every part of the city of Sodom, both young and old, surrounded the house. They called to Lord, where are the men who came? to you tonight, bring them outside so that we can have sex with them. Lord went outside and meet to meet them and shut the door behind him and said, no, my friends, don't do this wicked thing. Look, I have two daughters who have never slept with a man. Let me bring them outside so you can do whatever you want to do with them, but don't do what you want to do with the feasters who have come here. And the men persisted. The Bible says they, they went there like what happened on the 6th of January. They went and banged the door. They wanted to destroy, to open the door. Until Jesus, who was inside, reached out, opened the door, and pulled Lot in uh, outside. And they struck them with it. Blindness. So you can see the state of Sodom and Gomorrah was so bad that the people were continuously thinking evil, like we are told about uh, when we say Genesis, uh, uh, Genesis uh, chapter 6, verse 1, Genesis 6. It says that uh, the people's minds were evil continuously. And that's what was what was said in uh, during that time, that Jesus came and destroyed that city. When he was inside, and um, the angel saw, told them, "Do you have any other people? Do you have anybody with you? You are sons or daughters?" Because the the, the, the angel knew that. Uh, Lot had some daughters who were already married with these people in the city. He said, yes, and he said, Harry, tell them that the Lord is going to destroy this city to get out. So they went. Verses said, uh, 12 says, the two men said to Lord, do you have anyone else here? son in law, sons or daughters, or anyone else in the city who belong to you, get them out, get them out, because we are going to destroy this place. The outcry of the Lord against the people is great that he has sent us to destroy it. And the Lord just went and uh, when he went to the son in law and where the their, their daughters were married to. When he told them, the Bible said, he told them, hurry up, because the Lord is about to destroy this uh, city. But his sons in law thought he was choking. His son in law thought he was choking. How can the Lord destroy this great city? How can we move out and leave our possessions? 
We are build good houses. How are we going to move? Let's go back to where Jesus spoke, where we read the memory first, we read in the book of Luke chapter 17 and see the contents at which Jesus is speaking these words. Luke chapter 17, Jesus, why is Jesus speaking these words? Luke chapter 17, and we can start from verse 28. Why is Jesus speaking these words? Why is, what was the context by which Jesus is speaking? And the context at which Jesus is speaking is speaking to his disciples about his second coming because he knew that he would come and probably the people would not be ready. He would come as a church. He's not coming as somebody. Luke chapter 17, verse 28. Read, let us read there. Luke chapter 17, verses 28. Luke 17, 28 says, Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they, they did eat, they drink, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. Until that day that Lot was told to get out and uh, it was, they were destroyed. So this message is to us. No longer should we linger in the streets because Jesus knew that he's coming back and he's coming back to take his own like he did to uh, Lord. Why? Why was Lord's wife lost? Because the Bible says Genesis chapter 19 Verse 26, let us read there, Genesis 19, 26. What happened to Lot's wife? Why did she get lost? And yet she was a good woman. She had a righteous man. She lived in a place where people were worshiping God. She had known the God of Abraham. Why such a good woman would get lost? Why? Because she was not a murderer. She was not an adulteress. She didn't kill anybody. But why did she get lost? The Bible doesn't say that she was unfaithful to the husband. The Bible doesn't say she was an adulteress or she was a murderer or she was a thief or she, she did something bad. The Bible doesn't say she was gossiping. No. But why did she get lost? And that's the question we are going to answer today. Why did she get lost? Genesis chapter 20, uh, the Genesis chapter 1, 19, verses 26. Let us read it there. Genesis 19, 26 says, but, she, but his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Ludi's wife looked back because the angels had given them instruction. It was not easy even to come out of from Sodom. It made even the angels to hold their arms. They hold the arm of Lut, they hold the, the wife's arms and the two daughters who were not yet married. They hold their hands and land them outside the city and they told them, escape for your life. Flee, run away, don't look back. If you linger here, you will be destroyed. Those are the instructions, simple instructions. Escape for your life. Flee, run, don't look back. If you do, you will be destroyed. The Bible says God is good. He waited, he told them to go to the mountain. But Lord said, Lord, we can't go to that mountain. It's a small city here. You see a small one, a small one. 
it's, it's small. Do you know it's so little? It's a small. It's, it doesn't have a lot of people like the one in Sodom and Gomorrah. It's small. I don't think it's so evil. Let us go there. Allow us to go there. And the Lord, because the Lord was so righteous man, the Lord said, okay, I grant you to go to that small soul. He went there. But when he reached there, the wife was not there because she had looked back. So why will good people like this lady, Christian lady, a lady who was in a, a house of a righteous man, why did she get lost? Those are some of the things that we want to look today. Why such righteous people get lost? Why should Christians, we have buried many Christians. Some of them, we think that they will be in heaven. But when we reach there, we will be shocked that they are not there. There are some people, they are so nice outside. Even they do God's job so good. But there is something inside them that is not right with God. My Bible tells me that the sin that made Lord's wife to be lost is she had not cut the link from the world. She had confirmed herself to the world. Even though she was a Christian, she was in a church, but her mind, everything, it was world. And this one made her to get lost. And that's why Jesus is telling his disciples, are you going to leave me too? Is, are you going to leave me? Are you going to abandon me? It's a question that Jesus is asking to us too. Are we going to leave him? Second Peter chapter two, verses four. Second Peter chapter two, verse four. Peter is telling us what is going to happen, what warning that is giving us. Second Peter uh, uh, chapter two, verses four. Uh, God is giving a warning. For if God did not spare the angels when they sinned, but he sent them hell. Verses five, for he did not spare the ancient world. You know, the ancient world, Jesus is talking about no time. He gave them 120 years and the righteous no preached to them, but the people could not repent. 100 years and the 20 that he gave no to preach. People could not hearken. The Bible says only no and the seven members of his family entered the ark. The rest were destroyed. And this one shows that they, they reach a time that God is mercy will no longer plead to the sinner. There is a time that will reach that man's heart is so hardened, even though somebody rises from dead to preach to them, they will not repent. And that's why Jesus is telling them, remember Lord is why. She, she, she was a privilege. She had all the privilege that she could have as a Christian or as a wife of a pastor or as a wife of a Christian. She was so nice outside. Everybody knew that she was nice. But in her mind, she doubted God's promises. In her mind, she, she had unbelief spirit. In her mind, she was rude. She did not accept it. the God of his, of Abraham. She did not for, accept the God of the husband, Lord, even though she was there. She, she unbelieved. She had all her mind settled in the possession because, you know, when Lord came there, she had a lot of possession, she had a lot of wealth, she, she was a prosperous man. And the woman could say, how can we leave all this one and be told to join to Christianity? How can this one be? And she could not accept that one. So 
uh, uh, the Bible says she looked back and she, she, she got lost. In verse six of that, Peter, we were saying, he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by, pre, by burning them into ashes to make them example for us that God will reach a time that he will not keep on praying for us. A time is coming and soon it will when probation will close when Jesus will no longer, when the Holy Spirit leaves a man who is a Christian, a man or a woman in the church, they start losing interest in the church. They start losing interest in prayers. They start losing interest and they can now talk of what, when you bring a topic of the world, they are number one, that they know everything. If you bring the song of the world, they can sing so nicely without even missing. But when you bring them the words of heaven, they, they don't have interest. They don't have interest to read their Bibles. They don't have interest when they even praying for food. They see that it's wasting time. That is how degenerated people become when the Holy Spirit of God leaves a man. Sometimes they are even in, in the church, but they are there as a stumbling block. They lead many people to sin. They block many. Remember, Lord's wife. Outside here, you can't accuse them of anything. They look so nice, perfect, they look real good. But in their hearts, they are far from their God. And that's why Jesus said, remember Lord's wife. So we want to see some people who had privileges like Lord. One of them is Gaz. Gaz um, was um, in the book of Second uh, Kings. Second Kings chapter five. Oh, no, 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 it's okay. Yeah, sec, um, yeah. Second Kings chapter five, verses 20, we are given a man who was a servant of Elisha. You know Elisha? Elisha was uh, a prophet of God. And they say time in that second Kings chapter five, verse 20, there's a time that uh, Naaman was sick. Naaman of the Assyria was sick. And uh, Elisha went there and healed Naaman. And Naaman was so rich and he offered them some gold, some money. But the, the God is a servant. The prophet says, no, the gift of God is free. We don't, no, keep your money. We, we don't take that one. But God's who had seen, you know, remember there's a time that uh, the Syrians came to destroy and God saw them coming with the, coming and it was says, alas, my Lord, we will perish, they are coming with their chariots, they are coming. What can we do? They were on a mountain. And Elisha prayed, opened his eyes. This is the man who was there, but he got lost forever. Why? Open his eyes. He saw the angels surrounding the city, the angels of God with the mighty, and how they blinded the, those armies and they were taken inside Israel. This is a man because of greedy. Gahas, the Bible said, Gahas, the servant, when Elijah had gone, they went, they said, We don't accept the gift. It's okay, go back. God has healed you. And he reached the way, he says, this prophet, is, this prophet is useless. How can he leave such a lot of money like that? The man who got oh, have an idea. I would lie to him. I go back so that I can get it. Let's see what he says, verse 20. Those who have um, uh, Second Kings chapter 5, verse 20 says, God, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said to him, my master was too easy on Naaman, this Aramean, 
by not accepting from him what he brought. He, he brought. I should stay lot. I will go back after him and get something from him. I want to get that bribery. He was so greedy. So he went back and used the line. And remember, this is a man who, who walked with the prophet of God, who had seen God performing a miracle, who had seen how God answers Elisha. But the man got lost because he was greedy. And he ran. He ran back, leaving Elijah there. He's thinking that Elisha didn't see. He went there. So God hurried after Naaman. When Naaman saw him running toward him, he got down from the chariot to meet him. Is everything all right? He asked. Everything is all right. God answered, my master sent me to say, two young men from the camp of the prophet so, uh, have just come to me from the hill country of Ephraim. Please give them a talent and a silver and two uh, sets of clothes. By all means. Verse 23, take two talents, said Naaman. He asked the guards to, to accept them and then tied the two talents of silver into the two bags with sets of clothes. Do we have people like those in the church? Do we have people like the guards who are there just to benefit moment, uh, with material gains? Who are there to lie to God's people that you cannot be saved unless you give such a kind of money to us? Are there some churches who are greedy and they think they are working for God? Are there people in the world who are there just asking people for money instead of giving them Jesus? Telling them that if you want me to pray for you, you have to bring $10,000. You have to sell, you have to give me some gold. As if God's gift is both. There was a man known as Simon during the time of the disciples. He saw the disciples performing miracles. The Bible says it was a witchcraft. And he asked the disciples and he gave them money and told them, give me this power so that also I can hear people so I get money. And Peter said, Perish away with your money. You think the gift of God is to be bought. Salvation is free. Jesus said, salvation is free. Another person as we wind up, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. This man called Demas. He was a companion with uh, 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 Paul. You know, Paul is a great preacher. He was a companion. But my Bible said, Damas loved the world and he turned back, he abandoned. For Damas, because he loved this world, has deserted me and has gone to Thessalonica, where he would please himself. He left the message of God. He left the company of God's people and they went back to the world. And James says, friendship of the world is an enmity against God. James 4, verse 4. Is there something that can make you to get lost even though you are in a church? Remember, guys, he was with a prophet for, for many years, seeing Elisha performing miracles and God leading them. But these miracles did not change him. Dama saw power of preaching, power for even healing some people. But he loved the world more than he loved God's mis uh, mission. And Jesus said, remember, Lord his wife. So sometimes we, we tend to, to be like we are working for God, but our minds are in the world. Sometimes the Holy Spirit is bleeding for us, but we don't want to listen. So Lot went out 
and spake to his son in law, who had married his daughters, and said, Let's go out of this city because the Lord has come to destroy the city. But they could not. They could not. He told them, the angel told them, Escape, run away for your life. Don't look back. Don't look back. But they look, the wife looked back. So God is also warning us. He's calling us. He's saying to us. Luke chapter 9, verse 22, verse 62. There's something that Jesus is warning us. And Jesus said to him, no man having put his hand on the blow and looking back, back is a feed for the kingdom of heaven. Luke chapter 9, 62. If you are in a church and you are looking back, your minds are in the world. God says that person is not fit for the kingdom of heaven. And that's what Jesus said. If you, are, you have a blow, your oxen are pulling you, you look back. Jesus said, you are not fit for the kingdom of God. As we finish Ezekiel chapter 16, 49. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 49. Ezekiel is calling us that wild angels draw near as the people at the angel came to destroy the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. There are some things that made the, them to be destroyed. I wish I can get somebody to read that one. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 49. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 49. There's something there that. Reads. Yes. Behold, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. Bride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness was her. And in her daughters, neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and the needy. This is the sin that your sister, Sodom and Gomorrah did. And they got destroyed. So God is calling us as a church. God is calling us as you are listening, whatever you are listening. Jesus himself is the one who said this was because he's the one who was there during Noah's time. He's the one who destroyed. He comes as a church. When he comes, he's a church. Now it's, it's like uh, the ministry is in, in the sitting for us. But he's, he could not continue forever. A time reaches that God says enough is enough. 120 expired. People did not listen to Lut as he, uh, no, as he preached. And flood came and destroyed all of them. God sent the angel to go to Sodom and Gomorrah and pleaded with them to come out of it. They could not. And Jesus said, enough is enough. My Bible says, as the Lord reached far from there, fire and crimson, sulfur, rained and destroyed. And you remember that the last time we talked of, uh, um, uh, you know, God left and Lord went, uh, Abraham went to his house. So the following day, my Bible say, Abraham got up and looked to the father and they saw great smoke because he knew the city has been destroyed. So friends of God, God is warning us. It is Jesus himself who talked these words. He was talking at the context of his coming. Jesus is coming and he's coming. He wants you to hearken to his voice. Simple, simple instruction that he gives from his word. If they are obeyed, they are eternal life. If this simple faith in the Bible, they are disobeyed, 
they need to do. Simple things. This is a woman of faith. A woman like Micah, David's wife, who mocked the David when he, David was dancing because of bringing the ark. She got lost too. So a woman of a man of God that the Bible says that David was a man after God's uh, uh, will. But his wife called Micah, God lost. Another woman, good woman, Sarafira, Christian going woman. But a small thing of lying to the Holy Spirit, small thing. She too, she died forever. So there are small things that we see there is more and we keep on doing them. Even the church don't know them. They can't see you doing them, but you and your God, you know what you are doing in secret. Those small, small things, small things of not obeying the instruction, simple instruction that God gives. Jesus said, my sheep will follow me and they will hearken to my voice. When you read the Bible, are there some things that God speaks that you tend to ignore? God's word is so plain. Are there small things that you are doing secretly that people see you, you are a good church goer, you are a good pastor, you are a good, uh, you everything, you are good outside. But is there something so small that can make you get lost? Is there something so small like God, the servant of Elisha? Like greedy, like bribery, like stealing from God. Is there something you, you know yourself with your God that you are doing secretly? Outside here, the church says you are a good, you do everything, you participate in nice. But there is something small, small thing, small. And that's why Jesus said, remember Lord's wife. No longer linger in the streets because Jesus is coming as a king and as a judge. May God bless you all. Amen. Amen. Samson, that was a very wonderful sermon.